Partly any time is dangerous. However, I saw, I saw recently in my neighborhood at Musadan that those who were forcibly driven out from there by our army and others of their party screamed as at treachery because during the discussion of terms and while the treaty was still in effect, they had been surprised and cut to pieces. A complaint which might have had some plausibility in another country, but as I have just said, our ways are utterly remote from these rules, and parties should not trust one another until the last binding seal has been set. Even then there is plenty of room for wariness. Camones used to say that whatever harm you could do to your enemies in war was above justice and not subject to it in respect to either gods or men. And after making a truce with the Argives for seven days on the third night, he went and attacked them as they all slept and killed them, alleging that in his truce there had been no mention of the knights. But the gods avenged this perfidious subtlety. When Monsieur de, de Ogbigny was besieging Capua and had given it a furious battering, Signor Fabrizio Colonna, governor of the town, had begun to parley from on top of a bastion, and his men relaxed their guard. Our men took possession of the place and cut the enemy to pieces, and in more recent memory at Zvoy, Signor Giuliano Romero, having made the novice's blunder of going out to parley with the constable on his return found his place siege, seized but so as not to leave us without our side of the story when the marquis of pescara was besieging genoa where duke Ottaviano fregoso was in command under our protection the agreement between them had been pushed forward so far that they considered it completed but on the point of its conclusion, the Spaniards, having slipped inside, made use of their advantage as if it had been full-fledged victory. And since then, when Lignium Berrios was being besieged by the emperor in person, its commander, the Count of Brene, Brene sent his lieutenant Berthaville out to parley, and during the bargaining the town was taken to conquer always was a glorious thing whether achieved by fortune or by skill Ariosto so they say but the philosopher Chrysippus would not have been of that opinion and I just as little for he used to say that those who run a race should indeed employ their whole strength for speed but that, nevertheless, it was not in the least formidable for them to lay a hand on their adversary to stop him, or to stick out a leg to make him fall. And still more generously, that great Alexander answered Polypericon, who was trying to persuade him to take advantage of the darkness of night to attack Darius. I will not, he said. I am not the man to steal my victories. I would rather be sorry for my fortune than ashamed of my victory quintus curtius nor did he dine to knock down from the rear fleeing or orodes with an unseen spear he passes fears and man to man in fight he proves the better not by stealth but might virgil